Salmonella is a group of bacteria that can infect animals and humans. The bacteria was first identified in the 1800s and named after an American scientist called Salmon. Salmonella belongs to a group of bacteria called gram-negative bacteria. They're shaped like rods and can have flagella to help them move around. There are over 2,500 different types of the bacteria. Most human disease is caused by the bacteria belonging to a subspecies called Salmonella enterica. It's estimated that tens of millions of human cases occur worldwide every year, causing over 100,000 deaths. Salmonella can live quite happily in the intestines of many animals like cows, turtles, pigs, cats, and dogs, and in birds like chickens and ducks. Other parts of the animals, like feathers or fur, or the places they live in can be contaminated by the bacteria. Some types of Salmonella, like Salmonella typhi, live only in humans. From these sources, the bacteria can spread to humans either directly or indirectly. For example, it can spread to people directly when they eat contaminated meat or animal products like eggs that are not cooked properly. Eggs, in fact, are a very common cause of Salmonella outbreaks. They can also spread through direct contact with infected animals or their environments. Salmonella can also spread indirectly by contaminating water, other foods, utensils like knives and cutting boards, or the hands of someone who handles food. Salmonella is one of the most common causes of foodborne diseases in the world. People with salmonella infection can also spread the infection to others. Sometimes people can have salmonella for a long time without showing any symptoms. So what does salmonella cause? It can cause two broad types of disease depending on the type of salmonella that causes the infection. These are typhoidal and non-typhoidal salmonellosis. Let's have a closer look. Typhoid fever and paratyphoid fever is caused by either Salmonella typhi or Salmonella paratyphi A, B, or C. These two illnesses are similar. When these bacteria are ingested, they can enter the bloodstream leading to symptoms like high fever, stomach aches, headaches, loss of appetite, or a rash. These symptoms usually occur from between 8 to 14 days after being exposed to the bacteria in typhoid fever and 1 to 10 days after being exposed for paratyphoid fever. In some cases, it could lead to serious complications like bleeding from the intestinal tract or infection of the brain. The elderly and those with weakened immune systems are at a higher risk of complications. Non-typhoidal salmonellosis is typically characterized by a gastroenteritis and is commonly caused by salmonella types like enteritidis, Newport, and typhimurium. Symptoms are usually a fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, and sometimes vomiting. These symptoms usually occur between 6 to 72 hours after being exposed to the bacteria and can last for about 2 to 7 days. Although the disease can be relatively mild in most people, it can be quite severe in the young and elderly and those with poor immune systems. Sometimes the bacteria that cause non-typhoidal salmonella can enter the blood and infect other organs like the brain or the urinary tract and cause local complications. So, how can we prevent salmonella infection? Because salmonella is mainly a foodborne disease, one of the most important ways of preventing salmonella is ensuring the safety of food. There are a number of ways this can be achieved, including making sure food preparation areas are clean, separating raw and cooked food to prevent cross-contamination, cooking food thoroughly, keeping food at the correct temperature, and using safe water and raw materials to prepare food. To reduce the chance of being infected, high-risk foods that may contain the bacteria should be avoided. This includes raw eggs, unpasteurized milk and raw meats. Fruits and vegetables should be washed carefully, especially if they are eaten raw. Avoid using water that has not been boiled or treated. It's very important to wash hands, especially before handling food, during food preparation, after using the toilet, and after contact with animals or those who are sick. People with salmonella infection can spread the infection as long as the bacteria are present in their feces. They should not prepare food for others if they have symptoms and seek advice from their health care provider on when they can go back to work, school, or childcare. This is especially important for food handlers and those who care for vulnerable people. Some people, like those with typhoid fevers, may require negative stool samples and clearance from a doctor to say they are no longer infectious. There is vaccine that can protect specifically against typhoid fever. Salmonella infections are usually diagnosed by identifying the bacteria in stool samples or blood. Other types of blood tests, like those that check for antibodies, are sometimes used but are not as good. In some instances, salmonella can be isolated from sites like brain or urine if these sites have been infected. Uncomplicated salmonella infections are usually managed by rest and adequate hydration. 
Antibiotics are used for some high-risk groups, complicated cases, and also to treat salmonella infections like typhoidal fevers. There are some salmonella strains that are resistant to some antibacterial medication. This is a serious public health problem because these infections are difficult to treat. For more information about salmonella infections, talk to your healthcare provider and have a look at the websites below.